everybody. This is a video showing some of the commands I ran in the uh, checking the compatibility between clients and brokers in Apache Kafka. Again, this is meant to accompany a whole tutorial on this. So I'm assuming you've already seen that or you're going to click the link to go to that description or tutorial. So here, here we are. I've got a split screen of my terminals. On the right hand side, I've got um, Kafka 2.8 running. And on the left, we're gonna run through some commands. We're gonna start off by running in the 241 directory. We're gonna run this Kafka broker API versions. So when we run that, we're running a client that's um, a lower version than what the broker version is running. And what we'll see here is that there's some features, which I'll describe in a bit, that are unknown to this client. This should be expected, right? Because the client it doesn't have any idea about these new features that have come out with new releases of Kafka. Again, 2.8 on the right. That's our cluster, our Kafka cluster, and the client is 2.4.1. And as described, it's absolutely fine to run different versions of clients and brokers, but you'll want to try to sync those up whenever possible for the reasons described. So anyhow, we've got unknown here, and that's the part I want to call out. Now what happens if we do the, the opposite, where we use a newer version of a client compared to um, the broker? So let's go, as you can see here, I'll tell you, I have a bunch of different versions. Let's go to the 332 directory and run Kafka Broker API versions again. Now what we'll see is that we have these features that are now listed, but instead of unknown, we just have them unsupported. Again, this should be expected because the client on the left-hand side now is newer than the cluster or the broker running 2.8. So each one of these features has different versions within themselves. So let's find something here to, to go and dive into a little bit. What we're gonna look for is something like, what do I mention in the blog post, like add transaction? Oh, it doesn't really matter. You can, we'll find something that doesn't support all of the different versions um, released here. Um, okay, it's not happening very easily on this one because it's the, the version is new, newer than the broker. So, of course, it's going to uh, support it all. Let me go back to the 2.4 version. Or actually, let me just scroll back up to this. When we see the releases here, we'll see that some of them are not supported by all. So, like, here's an example. I add offsets to transactions. Of the different versions of this feature, only one of them is supported in this particular client. So as I described in that blog post that I'm going to show you now, the way you find out more about what are these versions, 0 to 3, and add offsets to transactions. All right, and as I was mentioning, the way you can find out more about those features that are listed when calling the command and showing the differences a good spot that I found is to go to this README um, and the link, I'll leave it in the notes or at the blog post. And if you come here, it's really worth the time to talk about um, or to read this more about the, the compatibility between clients and brokers. It talks about all kinds of good stuff here. But on our particular mission right now, we want to find out of those different versions in, let's say, add offsets to transaction, you'll see in this directory, this message directory, a bunch of JSON files. And if you click on the JSON files, you'll be able to learn about the different versions that um, are being tested in that Kafka broker API versions um, call. So if you have any questions about it, this would be my recommendation is to go through and take a look at what's actually being tested for here. And they'll mention on some of these, they'll mention um, KIPs, um, yeah, here's an example where you can see some KIPs that are associated with the version. So if you want to dive deep, that's the place to, to go a little bit further. Up in here into that README is the place to start, and it can give you some more information about it. And then for particular features that are part of the response, you might want to check those JSON files.
Cool. Hope this helps. If you if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later, maybe.